Hello dear ones, today I'm going to be exploring the psychology of Ben Solo and his shift in identity into Kylo Ren and finally his completion, his transformation, his cyclical transformation into his original identity of Ben Solo. So we'll be tracing the entirety of his redemptive arc. And we'll be exploring this and meandering our way through this psychological shift through the lens of Ben growing up, growing up in and living in the shadow of his ancestral power. He lives in the ancestral power. He lives in the shadow of his ancestral power. And these are two conflicting dynasties. These are two conflicting legacies that have imprinted on his psyche and that he has inherited. He has inherited the two legacies, the dark, Darth Vader, and the light, Leia, Luke, and Han Solo. So he's inherited these two conflicting dynasties and these have created a fundamental breaking point in his character, in his nature. And a fundamental theme that casts a massive shadow over Ben's arc is this theme of conflict, of inner conflict and fragmentation. And this really expresses itself through his personality, through his actions. And this identity, this dual identity, this dualism that colours so much of his character and his lack of personality reconciliation is very jarring. It is a jarring trait. It is a jarring trait that marks and tarnishes his character and his makeup. This duality is something that we will see is an underlying motif. Uh, throughout his entire story. Now, we will unpack Ben's transformation through three key themes, through three main themes. These are, beginning with, the predatory grooming experience that he is a victim to from Snoke. And not only will we be exploring the predatory tactics that Snoke employs against Ben Solo, we will also explore the fact that Ben does not feel safe with any of his parental figures, with any of the parental figures in his life. He feels unsafe with all of them. Not just physically unsafe, I mean emotionally, he feels unsafe with them. The second aspect that we'll be exploring is the pressure that he feels from his ancestry, the power of his ancestry and how these dynasties that have imprinted on him create a fragmented identity, which he struggles to reconcile and struggles to unpack. And the third aspect, the final aspect we'll be exploring is how he becomes unstuck and how he reconciles his sense of self and who he is. How does he reconcile this? And an important part of how he reconciles this is through his relationship with Rey, through the dynamic with Rey. She certainly represents a part of himself. He sees a lot of himself in her and he relives and acts out so much of his trauma through her. So we'll be exploring all of this. Now let's explore the first aspect of Ben's psychological makeup, which is that Ben is the victim of a predatory grooming experience. And this grooming experience from Snoke is mental and emotional, physical and spiritual. Snoke seeps into Ben's psyche. He breaches and vandalizes Ben's mind. And this is a gradual process of him ingratiating himself into his mind. And so Snoke, with, with Snoke, you see he is a wolfish mentor figure. 
he's rapacious, he is grasping at Ben. And the reason he does this is because he sees Ben's potential and Ben's ability. So he is greedily grasping at this. He's hungry to tap into that potential and tap into that ancestral power. That is so obvious within Ben. Snoke is mentally conditioning Ben Solo. Whilst he is being trained as a Jedi, whilst he is under the tutelage or the pupillage of Luke Skywalker, his uncle. So a tactic that Snoke uses is to access Ben's dark side as a form of validating Ben's pain. He legitimises Ben's pain and is able to touch on this in a way that Luke Skywalker refuses to. Now this is a sign of a clever predatory tactic because he's doing something that his other mentor, his other parental figure is not doing. And this is significant because Luke does not want to explore or even acknowledge the negativity, the darkness. And so to Ben, and actually this is this is just factually true, Luke is withholding. Luke is withholding knowledge, he's withholding truth, and thus he invalidates Ben's pain. He's thus invalidating Ben's pain that Snoke recognises and Snoke is able to connect with and tap into. Ironically, Ben doesn't feel emotionally safe, nor does he feel physically safe, eventually, with Luke. And of course, the obvious example is when his intention is there to kill Ben Solo. Ben sees this and immediately he is emotionally triggered. He is psychologically triggered by this. So he does not feel fully safe with Luke Skywalker, who is a huge parental figure in his life. He is his uncle, he is blood. There is a connection there that is so intimate and profound. And so Ben becomes isolated from his parental figures. He becomes isolated from Han and Leia because he's training with Luke. And then he becomes isolated further from Luke who is also a parental figure. And this separation, separating Ben from his parents and his parental figures alike, amplifies the emotional and the physical distance with his family connection, with his family identity and his identity as Ben Solo. And this begins the shift in identity. So begins the shift in identity. And this shift is an acknowledgement of Kylo Ren and a distancing and an er eradication of Ben Solo. So I've just got it's my tea. So Ben is embracing this new dark persona and he wants to separate himself from his original identity. And a part of this is the power of one's name. Your name is very powerful and is central and fundamental to your identity, to who you are. I would strongly urge actually anyone, I do this all the time, to research the etymology of your name, find out what the meaning of your name is, what the origins of your name is, and see if you connect with what your name means, with what the origins of your name is. It's really fascinating. I do it with everyone who I care about or know or meet and um, it's very interesting how so many people they reflect their names they personify their namesake it's very interesting so he is blocking himself from his name and snoke insists that no one addresses him in his ranks as ben solo only address him as kylo ren so we see a massive isolation from Ben, from Ben's parents, from Ben's life, Ben's parental figures, and an, a fragmentation as well is occurring within Ben, a fragmentation in his psyche. Because now he has two identities, the duality is there, the duality was already there with, his dynast with the dynasties that he inherited, with the legacies in he inherited, and the duality is now there within himself with his own identity. 
So Snoke penetrates his mind and picks him apart. He is picking Ben Solo apart, only to reconstruct and rebuild him again as Kylo Ren. Now, let's unpack Snoke's tactics, Snoke's grooming tactics, his conditioning tactics, and Snoke's agenda. His agenda is this, he wants to weaponize Ben, weaponize Ben Solo. He wants to weaponize Ben's ancestral power. And he also wants to harness the blood legacy. And so he places massive emphasis on Ben emulating Vader, on him emulating Vader's ancestry, of tapping into that power that's within him. And Snoke pierces Ben's mind which he's doing throughout his Jedi training with Luke, and fosters within him, he, he plants the seed within him of emulating Vader. He fosters within him this concept of emulation, emulating the dark power and tapping into the dark power of Darth Vader. So he builds and builds Ben up. And then, and then, he very cleverly, very cleverly builds him up, encourages him to emulate Vader, only to chastise Ben when he does. He chastises Ben when he does seek to emulate Vader. An example of this is when he dons the helmet that is echoes, physical echoes of Darth Vader. Looks very similar. When he does this, he humiliates him. So he's been here, he's been in his ear about, he's been in his mind, conditioning him to emulate that power of Vader. Then when he tries to echo that, he is shut down. And this creates massive emotional whiplash. This is massive emotional whiplash. He places so much emphasis on his ancestral power and then immediately contradicts this by berating him and humiliating for that little nod, that little hat tip to Darth Vader, to his grandfather. So, Ben is rejected by Luke, physically and emotionally. Then, he feels safe, he feels, he feels unsafe with, within the Jedi Order and so Snoke becomes his refuge, his emotional refuge, his point of safety. So when Snoke abuses him, it is like a hammer. He is both the refuge and the hammer and the abuser. He's a refuge and the abuser, which and the oscillation between the two, between abuser and emotional refuge and comforter, that is massively, massively jarring. Now, a big part of his journey as Kylo Ren, of his identity as Kylo Ren, is to purge Ben Solo from his psyche. He wants to purge him from his soul. And therefore, the mask that he wears that's similar to Vader's removes this identity. It removes his identity, his face, the face of Ben Solo is removed, is stripped away. And not only does it echo Vader's mystique and Vader's power, it creates an ambiguity in his identity. And very interestingly, slight side note, when one removes their identity, they magnify the chance of a violent outlet. So when you rob a bank, if you cover your face, you're far more likely to engage in violence and do things you would not normally do were your identity to be on show, were you to be revealed, unve unveiled and revealed. This is the exact same thing that happens with when he's Kylo Ren. The mask allows him to have violent outbursts and violent, violent moments because his identity is ambiguous here. And this morphs into a very jarring conflict for Ben, for Kylo Ren, because his Jedi training was 
all about inhibition. Inhibit your feelings, inhibit your feelings, control your feelings, control your feelings, control your feelings. Don't sit with them, don't acknowledge them. And Snoke, on the other hand, on the flip side, trains him to unleash, unleash those emotions, unleash those, that's what the dark side is all about. Feeling that anger, feeling that passion, unleashing it, it's a, it's a catharsis. So for Ben, it is just that, it is release. It is turning on the valve and it's an outlet, a violent outlet. So Ben is not reconciled with either identity. He's not reconciled with Ben and nor is he reconciled with Kylo Ren. He's betwixt and between. And as I said earlier, he's in a psychological no man's land. And this brings with it self-hatred because he does not recognise who he is. So the self-hatred he feels being drawn to the light and being drawn to the dark is so real. Now, let's delve into his relationship with Ray and how this allows him to become unstuck. This is the third aspect that we'll be exploring, the third theme, the third key theme. And his relationship with Ray is the key to unlocking this. The context is this, the context is this. He mistrusts all his parental relationships, all of his parental figures. In those dynamics, in the dynamic he has with all of his parental figures, he does not feel safe emotionally. And so he relives this trauma and tries to confront this trauma through trying to penetrate Ray's psyche, through inflicting on Ray the same trauma he experienced of, of one's mind being breached. His mind was breached, his mind was vandalised, he was conditioned. And he is trying to do the same with Ray. He's trying to relive this through Ray. He sees so much of himself in Ray. Ray is a representation of a, an aspect of him. Ray symbolises a part of Ben. And so the psychological assault on Ray is for him, sadly, and in a very twisted way, it's a form of connection. It's natural for him. This invasive, assaultive, combative breach of her mind is a way for him to try and connect with her. It's a natural form of connection and intimacy because he experienced it when he was growing up, when he was in training. He experienced this. So for him, it is second nature. For him, it is a very twisted way of trying to reach out and connect with Ray. So, in a very twisted way, it's, it's for him a very intimate thing he's doing with Ray when he's trying to penetrate her mind and invade her mind and connect with her. He wants to, to link with her in a way. Now, slight side note, when he kills Han Solo, when he kills Han Solo, when he kills his father, this is not because he hates his father. This is a way for him to purge the remnants of his Ben Solo identity. Do you remember earlier I mentioned we were exploring how he's become fragmented in his identity? He's both Ben Solo and Kylo Ren and he feels a conflict and he feels stuck. He doesn't know how to become unstuck. He feels a pull to both sides of the force, the dark and the light. And so for him, this is a way to purge Ben from his identity, from his psyche and cleanse Ben out of him. For him, it's a sacrifice, killing his father in a very twisted way. In the same way it's twisted, his trying to be intimate and connect with Ray, his connection with Ray, him trying to connect with Ray, it's the same thing. He's trying to cleanse himself, not because he hates his father, but because he, it's the ultimate sacrifice. It's like killing himself. When he kills Han Solo, he kills a part of himself. He kills Ben. That's what it represents, him killing Han Solo. It's nothing to do with the hatred he feels for Han. If anything, it's to do with the hatred he feels for himself. It's an act of self-hatred. And it is a, it encapsulates the self-hatred 
that has plagued Ben. So, he's lost ties with Han. He's trying to lose his ties with Luke, with Leia, with Vader. He's trying to lose all of these ties. The way he tries to lose it with Vader, by the way, is through smashing the helmet. Obviously, he pieces it back together again to form his own form of legacy, his own form of identity and uh, dynasty. And he also severs the ties with Snoke, his abuser, his groomer, his mentor, the wolfish mentor. He does that through killing him. So he kills Han, kills Snoke, severs ties with Luke, severs ties with Leia, severs ties with Vader. And so, bearing all that in mind, bearing that context that I've just outlined, Rey is a vessel to connect with and obsess on because she is a safe refuge after he severed all those ties she is a safe refuge and he projects onto her this wolfish grasping breach this trauma that he's experienced he wants to imprint onto her because to him it's a way for him to connect and moreover now that he's severed all these ties in his mind, Ray is the potential of a new legacy. He wants to form and forge his own legacy. He wants to kill the dichotomy of light versus dark. He wants to kill the dichotomy that he has inherited. And he wants to transcend. He wants to transcend and forge a new blend of the two. He believes that him and Ray represent a new form of the force and in so many ways they do they do what he said what he says does make logical sense he wants to forge a new dynasty a new legacy and that is to kill the past kill the dichotomy kill the duality and fuse and become something more powerful transcend this ascend that's what he wants that's what he proposes to her and in so many ways what he wants to propose is something very beautiful but it is rejected. It is rejected by Ray. Ray rejects him and his proposal. And this is painfully familiar for Kylo Ren, for Ben Solo. It's painfully familiar. He's been rejected. The biggest rejection I would say that he experienced was from Luke Skywalker. Luke was training him. And then when he faced and confronted Luke about to what he thought was kill him, the intention was there. The intention was there to kill him. The thought had been planted within Luke. When he saw this and confronted, that is the ultimate rejection. One of your parental figures, your own blood, wants to kill you when you're growing up. So for him, this is painfully familiar, this rejection. And Kylo feels stuck. Kylo Ren has felt stuck. And so Ray is a way to become unstuck. Ray is a form of purpose. Ray embodies and personifies a new purpose for him, a new legacy. And so Kylo Ren, in his fragmented, dualistic makeup, sees Ray as a way to permit a new identity, a fresh identity. And he struggles to embrace and confront this conflict all his life. He struggles to embrace the conflict, recognise the conflict, just sit with it. He can't sit with it. He's agitated with it. So Ray becomes a vessel, a vehicle through which he can reconcile this. She's more than just a romantic interest. She's more than just his counterpoint in terms of her skill and her connection with the Force. She's more than this. She is a way for him to confront this conflict and solve this conflict within him. So this redemption that comes with him when he finally makes the decision to return and revisit Ben Solo and when he finally confronts Palpatine with Rey. This redemptive arc comes in the form of reconciling his identity through his parents. 
He reconnects with Leia. Leia reaches out to him and touches a part of his soul. Likewise, his experience, his spiritual experience with Han Solo means he is able to reconnect with his old identity, with his, with his childlike self, with his childlike trauma. And so this reconnection with Ben comes in the form of Leia and Han igniting that aspect of Ben Solo within him. And it also comes through his link, his romantic link and his counterpoint link with Ray. Because Ray wants Ben. Ray is attracted to the dark aspects of Kylo Ren. Obviously, there is an aspect of her that is drawn to that. Equally, she is very vocal about wanting the Ben Solo aspect. She rejects his proposal because she wants to connect with Ben Solo. And that is why, with his redemptive arc, it is so beautiful that Ray is able to share an intimate moment with him as Ben Solo when she is kissing him and being intimate with him as Ben Solo. He is sort of almost, the mask has been taken off and he is revealing his vulnerable, his vulnerable identity, his vulnerable self. That is why I find his reconnection with his identity of Ben Solo so beautiful. And that intimate moment with him and Ray when they kiss is so emotional because she's seeing the vulnerable self. He's removed the mask and it is a beautiful, intimate moment, emotionally, physically. And she is connecting with him on a very vulnerable, very real level. And that is why I love this redemptive arc so much. It, I was bawling my eyes out in the cinema. I watched it three times. What? And Kylo Ren, Ben Solo, is my favourite character in the new Star Wars films. I love Adam Driver. I think he is just the most striking creature. And he does such a beautiful job of expressing that conflict that and the fragmentation that Kylo Ren feels, that Ben Solo feels. And finally, unveiling that, uh, revealing that vulnerable aspect of himself. It's done so beautifully and so tastefully, in my opinion. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I loved researching Kylo Ren and researching Ben Solo. I find exploring these fictional characters in fantasy and sci-fi really, really exciting. I love doing it. And it actually helps me to unpack so many of my experiences. That's why I love it so much, because you recognise so much of your own trauma, your own experiences in life through these different characters, and it helps you to discern, be discerning of yourself. It enhances your self-awareness and allows you an opportunity, a safe opportunity to to recognise different parts of your own psyche and reconcile them yourself. Thank you so much for watching this. I will be doing another video soon, possibly on the Jedi Order or on Rey. Thank you so much for watching. Catty bye. Bye.